I'm your host, Locum23, joining me for AME Chapter 19, here for the right reasons. And yes, by the way, Elementalist is bugged. Yes, it's causing crashes for everybody, including myself. And no fix MIA. It's the night of the two-hour live finale. And Piper has called you in the confessional before the final challenge. Well, 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 you're still here. You asked me to come downstairs. I meant in this house for the final challenge. Jen wasn't completely wrong about your potential. Maybe you should have listened to her. Just sit down. I have a live show to run, not to mention two high-maintenance guests, hosts to deal with. Piper! Mm. How could you fire Jen so easily? If Jen decided to throw away her future over the feelings of one mediocre contestant, that's her mistake to live with, not mine. I was just doing my job, and over until tonight's over, I expect you to do the same. Now, you spent the season competing for the contestants' votes, but this confessional is your last chance to get America on your side. If there's a specific attitude you've got going for, or been going for, I'm going to need to see commitment now. Fine. Piper waves you over to the confessional chair and glances at her nose. So, our boy next door, you've made it to the house's underdog. From the house's underdog to the final three. Do you have any regrets about this season? I only regret that I ever got eliminated like some kind of amateur, that I don't get nearly enough action, but the season's ending. Being on AME has been the experience of a lifetime that I hope to never repeat. I mean, and I don't want it to end. I just hope I'll get to see all the other contestants again after the show wraps up. That was, uh, Sakurunch in... That was so... I don't even know what this word is. Sakrushin? It made my teeth hurt. I don't even know what that is. Is that a problem? That'll depend on the rest of your answers. I have my producers ask this question on every contestant's first day. Now that season ending, I'll ask it again. What makes you America's most eligible? Yeah, well, if you ask me, everyone on the show is in love with me. There's no competition with so many losers in the South. That's up to the audience to decide. There's been a ton of amazing contestants this season. I'm just lucky to have shared this summer with them. I just hope I've made an impression on the viewers. Not what I've gone, would have gone with, but I suppose it's your confessional. Last question, let's be honest. Who do you think will actually win the grand prize tonight? Um. I would like to say me, but that's like going, Oh boy, I'm going to win the Powerball, or the Megaplier, which was worth $1.6 billion. I could have changed so many goddamn lives with that money. I'm just saying. I'm going to go with Adam. Adam will probably win. He's a great guy, and the fact that he has made it to the final three says he's a strong competitor. Interesting. In a few hours, we'll get to see how right you are. Your answers were predictable, but consistent. I can definitely play play you as a sweetheart. You were a sweetheart in your last confessional. I've been a sweetheart throughout this whole damn thing. Thanks, I think. How does it stack up with my reputation for the rest of the season? I reviewed all of our footage, and somehow you've put together a convincing sweetheart persona. Glowing earnestly is an audience of script tonight. Despite my low expectations, you've clearly made a lasting impression. You were a sweetheart on the Amy season. I'm glad America got to see my sweet side. Now, get out of my hair and makeup already. Or get over to hair and makeup already. I was gonna say, get out of my hair. God damn it. If you care about your chances of winning, you should probably look good for the jurors. Oh, believe me, I will. I'm just going to show up wearing a leaf. It seemed to have won me several things in, in the past. As soon as you step into hair and makeup, Fatima rushes over and wraps you in a huge hug. Oh, there's our boy next door. It feels just like yesterday that you walked in here like a deer in headlights. In my defense, the first thing you ever said to me was strip. 
A stylist schedule waits for no one. But before we get you all dressed up tonight, I just wanted to wish you luck. You've come a long, long way, John. I really hope you win. Uh, Fatima, I bet you say that to everyone. I tell everyone to do their best, hon. But I really do want you to win. Speaking of which, I've got the perfect outfit for tonight. Guaranteed to wow everyone on stage, whether they're your enemies or not. It might get you some points with our guest host, too. Vince and Sierra had quite an eye for fashion last season. Well, don't keep me in suspense. Oh, mother of God, what is this? I mean, at least it's better than some of the shit we've worn. But I'm like... I'm like Jessica Jones, man, pur purple man. I forget the name of his name, but... Vi Fa Vince... Vice Vice Roy? Vince Roy? God damn it, I forget his name. Anyway. He's the guy who played Doctor on Who. Or on Doctor Who. Um, no thank you. Uh, thanks, Fatima, but tonight I'd rather stick with something tried and true. Sure, hon. It's your outfit. Now, if you would address me like the Kingpin, I might have said yes. Just get out of here and give this challenge your all. Kilgrave, there you go. That's what I was thinking. Kilroy, voice Roy, blah, blah, blah. You find the back patio abuzz with activity. Crew members are scrambling to get cameras and mics in place. Across the stage, you spot Carson introducing a man in a whale tailored suit to a smiling couple. Mr. Gallagher, I'd like you to meet our fabulous guest hosts, Vince and Sierra. This is Mr. William Gallagher, one of the studio executives. Ah, I remember you two from last season. You put on quite the show. That's very kind of you to say. It's so wonderful to meet you. You guys were the finalists? Adam, how did you lose? Wait, no, Adam won, that's right. I can see why Adam won, then. Just off stage, you spot Adam staring at Vince and Sierra, his fists clenched at his sides. Well, you look good. You kind of look like a vengeful Punisher right now, though. That's the couple who betrayed Adam in Season 9. Aren't they lovely together? Shut up. Ivy strolls over to you and heaves an exaggerated sigh. It's tragic, really. What happened between Adam and Sierra? I really thought those two would could make it work. Ah, uh, what do you mean? Adam and Sierra were a couple on the show. America was head over heels for them. At least until Sierra and Vince put Adam in the bottom two so they could be together. Why would I believe anything you say? You shouldn't. You turn and find Adam approaching you, his expression clouded. Ivy doesn't know what happened, really. Adam? Are you going to be okay tonight? Adam smiles gently at you and nods. If the worst part of this finale is acting or facing some skeletons from last season's closet, I'll be fine. That's your biggest concern. John, how he's feeling? Don't say I didn't warn you. Oh, shut up before I beat you with this damn thing I'm holding. There's more to the story than you know. Places, people! The show is about to start! Uh, maybe we can talk about this later. Piper directs you, Ivy and Adam, into a separate booth. As cameras start rolling, Adam flashes you a quick, reassuring grin. Good luck, John. I hope I won't need it. We're on in three, two... No one cares. Let Carson do it. I wish they would fire you for Carson. Good evening, contestants, and welcome to our live final extravaganza. Before our jurors arrive to vote for the winner of America's Most Eligible, you'll face one last challenge. With the help of our guest host, Sierra, one of our finalists from Season 9. It's so great to be back on IME Mansion. And Vince, the winner of Season 9. Ah... Thanks, Carson. I can't wait to see who'll take home the grand prize. Contestants, this challenge will test just how well you know the jurors. Did you bond with your fellow housemates over the summer, or have you only kept an eye out for number one? I kept an eye out for Mackenzie. What does that count? Our host will read a question about each of the jurors, and you'll each select an answer on the screen in front of you. The person with the most correct answers will win the challenge, and decide who will join them in the final two. 
Are you all ready? I... I guess. I'm just gonna wing this. Like they uh, say, fake it till you make it. Carson steps back and gestures to Vince with a flourish. Vince lifts up a stack of note cards. Let's start things off with a softball question for everyone. Pun intended. No, 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 I want a curveball! He winks at the cameras. What is the name of Han's baseball team? It is... Is it A, the Dolphins, B, Great White Sharks, or C, the Hammerheads? Mmm. So basically this is if you remembered. There's rustling in the booth beside you as Adam and Ivy make their choices. You look down at your own screen. Hans baseball team is the Hammerheads? Question mark? I feel like that's one. I, I feel like either the Sharks or the Hammerheads. You carefully select your answer. I'll let Han tell you if you're right. He signals for the crew to run to a video on the live feed. The same video point begins to play on your podium screen. Oh, we must have been right. My baseball team is the Hammerheads. Yay! He puts his hands up by his temples, fingers sticking out to the sides, presumably to imitate the star shark. Heads for life! Oh, you could stop. Yes. Watch for the great white sharks. Ah, you guessed what I had. I hoped it was the Hammerheads. They're just so adorable. Ah, Sierra, we'll take our next question. Sierra gives the cameras a bright smile before turning to all of you. Contestants, what part of Lena's least favorite part of the season? Was it A, being teammates with Han, B, getting eliminated, or C, sharing a bathroom with all of you slobs? Lena. Lena. Presumptuous bitch. I hated her. Um, she acted like she was bigger than everybody. I feel like B. Hey, some of us are very diligent about our bathroom hygiene. Lena's words, not mine. Lena's least favorite part of the season was... I feel like getting eliminated. Make your choice and wait for Adam and Ivy to enter their answers. Let's hear the answer from Lena herself. Let's be real. You were all messy as hell. But the dumbest part of the season was getting eliminated before I had my time to shine. Good thing you'll get to see me again for the finale. She blows a kiss at the camera as the video fades out. Look at that, we're two for two. Nailed it! Lena definitely told us loud and clear how she felt when she went to the jury house. One out of two right so far. I can work with that. Next up, we have a question about Tegan. What would be her top vacation spot? Is it A, her apartment, B, a yoga retreat in Cand Caillou, or C, a spa day in Orlando? I feel like it's B. If I know Tegan, she'd want to go somewhere out of the ordinary. Tegan's number one vacation spot is her yoga retreat. Anything with yoga has got to be Tegan's happy place. Let's see whose good vibes led them in the right direction. I want to feel centered and at peace on vacation, so my annual yoga retreat of Caillou is the perfect destination. You're all welcome to join me next year if your minds and bodies are in need of cleansing. Three for three. Ah, one was a piece of cake. That's what you get for being nice. Seriously? Not the spa day? Have you even talked to Tegan? She'd want to get as far away from the big cities and they're clouded artists as possible. Our next question is about Derek. What was his favorite moment from the season? Was it A, John's comeback from the jury house, B, seeing sparks fly with Ivy on the boat date, or C, kayaking at Oleta River State Park? I'm gonna go A. Derek liked both outdoor dates, but if I had to pick the best one... Shit! Um... No. Sparks fly with date. No. Kayaking. We all know Derek likes the outdoors, but let's see if there was a if there was any date he liked more. This whole season has been an amazing experience, but I'll never forget the day we spent at Oleta River State Park. If anyone's up for a kayaking trip after the season wraps, let's make it happen. 
We were also carefree back then, relatively speaking. I know he was happy to have me back, but... Whoever wrote these questions, option B was a low blow. At least you got it right. Well, unlike some people on the stage, I know Derek too well to ignore the truth. Carson steps up. That's because you know the date and the whole thing with him was a fake relationship. Carson steps up beside the guest host and throws you all a thumbs up. Great work so far, contestants. It looks like John and Ivy are tied in the lead with four out of four questions right. Seriously? You are the only one who took an interest in our fellow contestants. Ah, but the one person you won't win is Mackenzie, bitch. Who will pull ahead in our final round of questions? We'll find out after this short commercial break. Everyone take five. As the camera stops rolling, you catch Vince smirking at Adam across the stage. Not your lucky night, is it? Vince, don't. Save the million dollar smiles for the audience, Vince. No one else is buying them. Adam stalks off stage towards the house as you chase after him. You hear Sierra mutter to Vince. I thought we weren't going to get into this tonight. You finally catch up to Adam in the living room. So what's going on with you, Adam? The only answer you got right was about Lena. Adam sighs and rubs the back of his neck. Honestly, even that was a lucky guess. I know you have a history with Sierra and Vince, but you can't let them mess with your head on the finale night. John, that's easier said than done. What Ivy told you was just about the what the producers got on film. What really happened is a lot harder to forget. If you want to hear it, I think it's about time I told you exactly why I quit last season. Ah! You see, last season's twist through Adam's eyes in this exclusive flashback. Well, as much as I would love to, Adam, turn down his offer. I don't think we have time for the full story. We'll be calling... They'll be calling us back on stage any minute now. Good point. Just don't worry about me, okay? I came back on the show to prove that I'm not a quitter. So Aaron Vince uh, being here threw me for a loop, but I'm not going to give up. You promise? Promise. Together, you head back onto the patio for the next stage of the challenge. Sierra and Vince are lounging at opposite ends of the stage, but as soon as the cameras begin rolling, they step up next to one another, all smiles. I hope everyone's ready for the final round of questions. Bring it on, Carson. I'm ready to ace this test. I hope this round's easier than the first one. Oh, I'd like to beat you with a ball bat. I'll let my better half start things off this time. Sierra smiles a little too brightly back at Vince. Thanks, sweetie. Our fifth question is about Bianca. Which of these magazines has featured her on the cover? Sun and Sand, Miami Motocross, or Court de Couture? I feel like it's C. I'm really gonna go with C. Bianca has modeled on the cover of... I believe I'm right. God, it'll help us if I'm wrong. This sounds super high fashion. Let's get the scoop of Bianca's career from a model herself. I'm trying to remember bon Bianca. God damn it! Shut up. It's, it's, it's okay. Shh, 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 shh. Sun and Sand is the hottest swimsuit magazine on the East Coast, and the only one I'd list I'd be caught dead in. He winks and waves goodbye to the camera. Shit! Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Looks like the round's going better for you, Adam. I just need to shake off the nerves. Ben steps up to read the next question. Ah, this one comes from everyone's favorite rock star rider. I'm not sure I'd say he's everyone's favorite. Which of these popular songs did Ryder write? All the love we shared, born to rock this world, or... Want you to love me like I love myself. I feel like C. I I really feel like C because he's that self-absorbed. Uh, all the love we should. Now, come on, let's be honest. I want you to love me like I love myself. 
He is Ryder with your head, sir. Instead of sitting in the confessional chair, Ryder's on his feet, jamming on an air guitar. I'm not singing it. Go fuck yourself, Ryder. I don't like you. Wait, you... You can't just cut the feed yet, man. There's six more verses. Now, nope, bye. What a self-centered song. Never underestimate a rock star's ego. Ah, uh, should have known all the love we shared was giving the guy too much romantic credit. He's more of a pickup artist than a hard drum. Ivy is on an amazing lucky streak with six out of six questions right. Carson, shut up! How's that even possible? But let's see if she can keep that up with the final two questions. This one comes from Zeke. Apart from himself, who's the biggest hero in the house? Is it A, Mackenzie, B, Han, or C, John? I mean... Can I say myself? Shit. This is an opinionated question! This isn't getting to know someone! This is an opinionated question! Oh my god. <sighs> Zeke. I'm remembering back to Zeke. This is an opinionated question. I am fucking mad right now! Okay. Alright, let's do it. Han. Han is like his number one bro. Gotta be the answer. We all wish Zeke and Han bond this season, but there might be someone he respected even more. No, 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 mother! I don't have an ego because I wouldn't pick myself, but I digress. Not everyone got what it uh, takes to be a hero, but John does. <laughs> Zeke gives the camera a small salute, grinning. I know the real deal when I see him. One time I don't want you to like me, and the one f***ing time... <sighs> I probably should have known that. It was basically a freebie for you. Shut up, Ivy. Hey, maybe John was being modest. Yes, thank you, Adam. That brings us to the last question of the night. Vince takes a moment to look each of you in the eye, smiling encouragingly before he starts to read aloud. Your final question is from Mackenzie. What was her favorite date of the season? Was it A, the bowling date, B, the lighthouse date, or C, the sailboat date? I bet Mackenzie would pick a one-on-one -on -one date over a group date, which was the lighthouse date. Time for our last answer of the night. Take it away, Mackenzie. A great date should have a clear skies, fun company, and a little mischief. Only the lighthouse date with John had all three. Woohoo! Congratulations, John and Ivy, for getting this one right. Hooray! How did you get all of them right, you little bitch? I'm here. <laughs> I am mad! You weren't even there for the date. No, but I know how Mackenzie thinks. She's always been vocal for about her opinions. Oh my ass! I'll let Carson take the wheel from here, because... It's the moment you've all been waiting for. Time to find out who won. The final challenge. There's a faint drum roll from off camera as Carson compares your quiz for the scores. The numbers are in, and Ivy is our winner. Come here and take a bow. Carson beckons you all over in front of the podiums so you can pose for the cameras. I begin some pageant wave. Thank you all so much. Oh, it's okay. If I throw you off the damn roof, it'll be fine. That was an impressive performance. Almost too impressive. You're starting to question it too, Adam. Tell me about it. 
We'll be back in a few minutes to let a challenge winner decide who's going to be the final two and who's going home. I... There's no way anyone got 8 out of 8. There's no way. There's no way because the opinionated bullshit. I think it's rigged. I think the highest you could probably get was 7 out of 8. I don't think there's 8 out of 8. I'm sorry, I don't believe it. As everyone steps out of the bright lights on the stage, Ivy quickly walks past her podium. She tries to tuck a sheet of paper into her dress pocket, but it slips out as she walks away, and you pick it up. Wah! Wah! That's how she got every question right. She's been cheating this whole time. But where'd she get the answers? You glance around the set, Piper is ordering the crew to adjust a few camera angles, and Carson is studiously retying his tie. If I'm gonna tell anyone about Ivy, this could be my only chance. No one, Piper, Carson. You find Carson as he finishes adjusting his tie and begins slicking his hair back. Carson, do you have a minute? For my contestants, always. It's about the challenge. When Ivy was leaving the stage, he dropped this paper with all the answers on it. Ivy cheated? Oh, this is bad. This is this is very, very bad. Can't you just disqualify her? Not after we announced her live on air as the winner. No, because it would be more drama, dude. Backtracking now would, would kill our ratings if Piper doesn't kill me first. You two, enough dawdling. We're about to go back on air. Carson shoots you a helpless, apologetic look, because he... To head back on stage with the other contestants. So, Carson was not the one to go to. You know, Carson, I liked you. I gave you the benefit of the doubt, and you just, you just slapped me in the face, bro. Seeing the frustration on your face, Adam gives you a gentle nudge with a shoulder. Hang in there, John. You can get through this. How? Ivy's been sabotaging me the whole season. There's no way she's going to keep me around. We'll see about that. Contestants, we've come to our final elimination ceremony. As hard as it is to say goodbye to either John or Adam, we'll be going home tonight. Ivy, since you're tonight's challenge winner, that decision is up to you. Ivy wrings her hands nervously. Yeah, I'm sure you're real nervous. I'm a nervous about I'm gonna hunt you down and kill you after the show's over. I'm sorry, you two. I know we haven't always got along, but you're both decent people. Ivy, it's harder to betray someone to their face, isn't it? Yeah. When she eliminated you the first time, she never had to look you in the eye. That wasn't easy either. I was just trying to keep myself in the game. And that, and that's what I have to do now. Have you made your decision? I have a glance between you and Adam looking torn, but as her eyes meet yours, you know exactly who she's going to choose. This is the most difficult choice I've faced all season, but she's not eliminating anyone. Because I quit. What? You can't do that! Carson, tell him he can't do that! While half the cameras push in on Ivy, the others focus on Adam and the steely look in his eyes. There's nothing in the rules that prevents a contestant from settling down if they choose to. No! This was supposed to be my decision! Doesn't it feel so good when someone rakes the game against you? Does it? Ivy glares daggers at him from across the stage. Adam turns to you with a rueful smile. I'm sorry to go like this, John, but you deserve to be in the final two. Adam. That was actually, I mean, man, he fell on the sword for it. I will never forget this. You don't need to thank me. Just make the most of it. Adam nods resolutely at you, and he doesn't look resigned or defeated, just determined. Promise me you'll win this thing for both of us. I'll give it everything I got. Carson, you gonna do the honors? Carson clears his throat and straightens his tie, clearly still reeling 
in the turn of events. In a shocking twist, it, it appears that tonight Adam has deemed himself ineligible. I'm coming for you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm coming for you with a bat. Um, mm -mm. Omar, Adam, you're with me for the commercial break. We've got to ring every juicy detail of this exit confessional. I'm expecting some unforgettable footage. Of course, Mr. Gallagher. Why not handle hand it to him? I'm really surprised because he's a studio exec. Which would lead to him to suspect that someone, either Piper or Omar, is helping this rig scenario. Piper and Omar shepherd Adam into the house. You try to follow them, but when you reach the living room, Ivy catches you by the arm. Oh, don't touch me! Adam might have bought you some time with that stunt, but the competition's still mine. If you know what's good for you, you'll give up now. I have friends in high, high places. Like the friend who gave you the cheat sheet? Surprise flashes across Ivy's face for an instant. How did you... You know what? It doesn't matter. Because there's no way my friend will let me lose to you. If you're talking about Piper, then I've got bad news for you. I'm not afraid of her. Oh, that's cute. Piper has her role to play, but I've got someone much, much more powerful in my corner. I've been working with Carson all season. I'm mad. Carson? No. N no. 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 I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Adam's sacrifice has gotten you to the final two. But can you beat Ivy when she has Carson on her side? Find on the next episode of America's Most Eligible. No. No, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. No, 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 Don't do this to me, Carson. Don't do this. Don't do this. I gave you the good voice. Yeah, I knew you were going to be a piece of shit. I would have gave you, like, a lying heckler Countess Henrietta voice. Don't do this to me. I I feel like, no, I feel like, can we really trust anything that comes out of Ivy's mouth? No. No. Shh. No, you shut up. <laughs> <laughs> this book has me triggered right now. Um, actually, no, Elem Elementalist still has me triggered. So, like I said at the very beginning, Elementalist is still bugged. Everyone's either crashing, period, or just crashing at the professor. Um, please do me a favor. Head over to either Facebook or Twitter to uh, let them know that you pretty much what issue you're having, and spam the shit out of them. I don't really care at this point. Um, Pixelberry, you know, has been failing you guys, um, and one, I suggest you, if you are spending money on diamonds, don't, um, literally hold your wallets out of their reach right now, um, because this makes week three of people having issues connecting to choices, connecting to books, crashes, things like that, um, we need to hold choices to a better accountability, and, um, I would like you guys to do that, um, at the very least. Um, because this is this is something where they need to be held accountable. If other applications do this, they typically will compensate the users for something. Um, I'm out my time today from trying to record Elementalist live on Twitch, let alone. And um, basically, you know, I'm out of that time. For the you people who are just playing through normally and just tapping through, you guys are out of your time too, especially if it crashed for you. So please message them on Twitter, message them on Facebook, let them know that you are not happy with this at all. And message them even if you can. Um, because it's it's we need to hold them to a better accountability and a better standard. Um, and that's case in point. Their app and their books should not be crashing three weeks in a row. Look at the problems we've had with Perfect Match. People have reported their MCs have switched sexes all of a sudden. They've become male to female, female to male, you know, all these things. So, you know, it's it's complete and utter BS. 
that this is going on, and again, we need to hold them to a better standard. So please give them a message. Spam them for all you, for all you I care, um, because they need to fix this, and again, they, they need to be held to a better standard. Um, especially because they're saying El Elementalist is going to be on Wednesdays, but it's so, also, if you notice in the bottom corner, it says Monday and Wednesdays. Something tells me it's going to give them the ability to be more flexible and screw up more, um, and this is one another one you know, instance of them doing just that. We've had issues with seniors, we've had issues with Perfect Match, we've had issues with High School Story, we've had issues now with an Elementalist. It's just an issue that continues to snowball, and it's an issue that needs to be stopped. You know, they've earned more than enough money off of everybody to stop what they're doing and actually fix the ship. And let's put it this way, they haven't been doing great writing as of lately either. We've got Desire and Decorum, ATV, Big Sky Country, all these books that none of us really enjoy, and I try and liven up on my channel as much as humanly possible. Otherwise, no one's really that interested in these books. It feels like they've fallen off, like they just don't give a shit, and they're just pumping out content to pump out content. So, again, hold them to a higher standard. Without further ado, remember Perfect Match 2 is up next, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.